welcome back to Window on the World. I'm your host, Karsten Gilbert, and as usual, we have students and faculty who have the opportunity here at Missouri Southern to travel abroad and study different countries. We are here with some faculty and students today that studied pretty much all over Europe, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, where did you guys exactly go? We went to Leipzig, Germany, and then from there to Prague, Czechoslovakia, then Vienna, Austria, Salzburg, Austria, then crossed over to Vienna, or sorry, Venice, uh, Italy, <laughs> then Rome, Italy, Florence, Italy, Pisa, Italy, and uh, stayed the last five days in Paris. Oh, wow. That's a lot of travel. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of travel. <laughs> and when did you guys take this trip? Uh, just this last June, we left here um, on June 2nd, caught the plane in St. Louis on the 3rd, mm -hmm. and started our travels on the 4th yes. when we landed. Well, wow. That's a lot of a lot of traveling. Yeah. So what, what did you guys do to prepare for this trip? Were you in a class that you were preparing for yep. all semester? Yep. Yeah. What class was that? Um, we called it the Tour of Composers, just like the, the actual tour. Mm -hmm. And I brought them in every th Tuesday at 1 o'clock. And we talked about things like uh, cultural differences, what to expect as far as going, traveling anyway. We were going on train, mm -hmm. how to catch the train, what was going to happen as we caught the train. Um, travel, wardrobe, things that they were going to eat. I mean, we tried to prepare them for everything that they were going to experience, but I think you would all agree that. <laughs> <laughs> that was not enough. It wasn't it was enough. <laughs> There's not a lot you can do. Like, it's yeah. nothing, it was nothing like I imagined any yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's nothing that always can prepare you from going over from one culture no. to the no. Next. no. I would <laughs> specifically tell them about Rome, because uh -huh. in Rome they have cobblestones that are about this big. <laughs> and I would say, make sure you bring good shoes, because those are going to hurt. And they're going, oh, I, I don't no, care. I don't care. Okay, okay, but oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, the cobblestones. That's just all I have to say. Oh my gosh. <laughs> But it, was, it was things like that. I was going to say, only two people lost wheels from the cobblestone train. Right? That's right. <laughs> so that was pretty uh, good. Yeah, we good traveled by use. train to, from mm -hmm. all these different mm -hmm. cities, and they had to drag whatever they had packed with them. So they were responsible for their own things. And we had a co like three or four people that had big suitcases. Huge oh, suitcases. Yeah. And you lost a yeah, wheel. I mean, yeah. Adam Haja lost a wheel. <laughs> so we're trying to make it as smooth as possible, but the, there's no way. Oh, goodness. And these are hundreds of year old streets. Yeah, yeah I bet. Yeah. So was this guy, was just your first time traveling over the ocean for all yeah. of you? For, yeah, for me, this was my first time ever being on an airplane. Yeah. <laughs> and so lots of firsts on this yeah, trip. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Megan is from Liberal. Uh-huh. And... <laughs> This town, Liberal, is very, very small. She was a fantastic <laughs> navigator. Wow. Yeah, she was Little the Liberal. Best. And actually, all three of you guys were good navigators. Oh, I'm going to disagree with that, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you got yourself places. Yeah, they each had to bring us somewhere. Yeah. 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 So, so here, here's a map. So on your tour of composers, did you guys study a specific composer and then go over, or what was your experience with the composers? Each of our cities was a center of um, the great composers of mm -hmm. where they either worked or were born or lived mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, I think for me, one of the biggest deals was when we went to Leipzig. We were two days away from the Bach Festival that's held there every single year. But in the church where he last um, performed and, and worked, uh, that's where he's buried. They had already moved his, his tomb to that church. And that was the tomb. About where you're sitting was a bunch of stairs. I was sitting looking that way at the, at the choir loft where the organ was. And we were able to listen to rehearsals wow. of Bach music being rehearsed for this festival right in front of Bach. <laughs> oh, For me, wow. that was a, that was pretty... It was chilling. Yeah, yeah. it was wow. surreal. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we work on this stuff every day, and yeah. having, like, that experience put with my music and, like, performing it, it makes me see it in a whole different light now. Yeah. yeah. Like, I have a little bit more of an insight into what yeah. I'm playing and, and the person who yeah. composed it and everything. Yeah. yeah. It's a new appreciation, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, I bet. Yeah, I mean, it's like you're playing this music. It's like, wow, it's beautiful, <laughs> but actually being there, yeah. and it's like, wow, he could have, you know, have been writing his music here and, you know, just stuff like that. It's it crazy. I kept telling him, so you never know when you sit down in these pews, Bach might have sat there, <laughs> Brahms might have sat there. Yeah. So it was kind of fun. Okay. Then I think my next 
probably the next most profound thing for me. When we were in Vienna, we went to the Central Cemetery. And the Central Cemetery has, of course, normal people buried there, but it has a lot of the big composers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you get to this one area and you have Beethoven, you have the Mozart's um, just monument, because they don't really know where he was buried. And then you have um, Strauss, and then over here you have Brahms. And for me, Johannes Brahms is like the big guy. And watching his, just looking at his grave, knowing he was there, it's like, this is a real person. And just kind of gave me chills. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I play Brahms a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, looking at, at that just kind of it put it together completely different yeah than than I have and I've been playing for years so even 30 years down the road you know I'm mm -hmm. did you guys have a favorite city that you visited <laughs> of course you had to yeah, yeah. yeah. Paris. yeah. <laughs> Paris was my favorite I like the people and the Louvre oh. a lot I love classical art so getting to see that was wonderful but I have like advice for people who go take multiple days to go yeah. yeah because we only got to cover the classic art wing which was my favorite mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah it, it was took us, what three hours yeah a lot. just to look so at much. the walls there's so much art to look at we I feel like we didn't even get to look at that very much yeah no. wow. and a lot of people yeah I and think Prague was my favorite because um, that's where we saw a marriage of Figaro and mm -hmm. the uh, very old grand opera house and I mean, I've always loved opera. I've always had an appreciation for it, but seeing like the real thing and like that's where Mozart premiered his um, opera Don Giovanni. I mean, that was just like gave me so many chills, and it was gorgeous, and you know, it was great. Besides, there not being any air conditioning, but <laughs> <laughs> it was okay. Yeah. It was <laughs> And you? I liked Germany. Yeah. Just <laughs> Germany so much, um, which is funny because for some reason going on this trip, I thought that would be like my least favorite place. I don't know why. And then I liked it a lot. Like the food was great. That was one of the few hotels we stayed at in Germany had a free breakfast for us, and their <laughs> breakfast was like that cucumbers was... and tomatoes and potato salad, and that made me happy. <laughs> 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 so, right so yeah, I like Germany a lot. No. I I found I I I felt relieved when we got out of the Germanic countries, yeah, and I think that was probably more a language yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. I I can speak a little French, and I'm Italian, and it just when we moved into Italy, it's like okay, I can settle down now. Yeah. I can you get the the Germanic. Areas were stressful. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought the German words were like easier to read. He, like he it that. looked more like English Which to me. Which makes sense because they mm -hmm. put together words to make a, a single word mm -hmm. and it, it creates more yeah. meaning mm -hmm. for them. I feel like there's like two types of people people who like French stuff and like mm -hmm. the other stuff and then. Germanic yeah, like, yeah. stuff that I makes sense. Agree. I'm yeah. I'm a French type of person. Like I even have French in my blood. It just makes sense to mm -hmm. me to be there. But in Germany, it was stressful. Like she said, yeah. like, I had no idea. I couldn't even say thank you. Even like <laughs> <laughs> it took me a while. I was like, wait, you say it this way? And I think people, the whole group is like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are also really different in Germany in a sense that like they are very like organized they have to have things a certain way they're very serious in my opinion of what i saw <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> they were you not as friendly change the order <laughs> no. <laughs> if a special no. comes out with your food you yeah. keep it mm -hmm. just they do mm -hmm. not do substitutions the schnitzel though that was amazing <laughs> i enjoyed that a lot <laughs> they had to go as we were going through they were eating um at street food basically and, and that's good that's good mm -hmm. stuff but when we got was that in salzburg that we finally did that. that was so and yeah. we went, I took them to a place that sells schnitzel, because you know, they'd never had schnitzel mm -hmm. before. So when they finally ordered it, oh, that was the best ever. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite meal, I think, yeah. in Europe. And I was dumb and I ordered ratatouille. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, schnitzel, I don't want to order that. I didn't even really know what it was. Like I thought it was going to be like a sausage or something. And then we got it and I ended up eating off of other people's plates. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was really good and it was like in a little house kind of thing yeah. and yeah. it was really homey and mm -hmm. the food was really really good really yeah, they put a lot great. of time and effort into it well, how was the food in the other places that you guys went because Italy must have some pretty great Italian food good pizza yeah I had some really good homemade noodle spaghetti type Ooh, stuff with seafood good. in it you had mm -hmm. some of that too you were pretty adventurous. Yes. Well, actually, the funny story is the worst pizza I had was in Rome, right mm -hmm. outside of Vatican City. There's these 
um, street <laughs> carts and <laughs> I was really excited, you know, like, oh, pizza in Rome, you know, but yeah, it was probably the most disappointing. Yeah. Um, but I mean, some of the best I thought we had was in Prague. Yeah. When yeah. you're eating in Germany, everything has kind of like a, a pickly taste, don't you think? Pickly. Yeah. <laughs> a briny kind of taste to it. <laughs> So when we got to um, the difference from Prague to the German type, Austria, those kinds of places, I thought Prague was a little more creamy, mm -hmm. had more sauces. Yeah. The pizza yeah. actually I thought was better in Prague than yeah. it was yeah, in Italy. what we had in Rome. Yeah. Um, I stayed with the pasta in yeah. Rome. A lot of my family will cook those authentic dishes, so I was trying to find the same dishes and eat there. Uh, Paris. I don't think you guys really got to experience real Paris food there. No, not really. But no. Paris, you know, has all the heavy mm -hmm. creams, and that, that's my favorite, and I didn't get to do much of that. We were so busy. We though. were. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. I like the croissants a lot. Like, I got oh, that everywhere. Those are so good. Like, yeah. nothing <laughs> in America can touch. Even the croissants that weren't in France, it was just, like, and it was yeah. impeccable. She it was, was great. the croissant. I <laughs> ate, like, two a day at least. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, just pastries in general. Mm -hmm. It was great. What they had to get used to was no ice. No ice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and tiny glass bottles, no refills. Yep. Yeah, it was very different. Water was expensive. Yeah. 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 Most places it was cheaper to get Coke than it was water. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. That was oh, different wow. than the last time I went. Yeah. It was all this basically the same. Yeah. yeah, it's easy to get dehydrated, I feel, yeah. if you're not planning correctly or bring your own water bottle. Yeah. Yeah, you'll get dehydrated. So what about some of the things that we did? Did you when you guys went to study the other musicians? Mm -hmm. When did you where, where exactly did you go to s on all these places? Well, we studied the musicians in the class, so mm -hmm. we already knew that we were going to go see um, where Bach lived and worked, and we saw Mozart's birthplace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, when we saw the Marriage of Figaro, it was in the same place that he premiered Don Giovanni in. Uh, mm -hmm. where, where else did we see? Uh, La Boheme. Oh. La Boheme was fantastic. Was, yeah. That was the best. That was in Rome. Yeah. That was mm -hmm. in the Teatro yeah. di Roma. Mm -hmm. And that place, one, is beautiful. It's probably the best opera seats I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> it was, Box seats right in front. <laughs> it was the best all the way around. The sets were amazing. It was the best mm -hmm. live symphony I've ever seen. And I've seen quite a few. I've been playing for a long time. And I was just take, I was just blown away. It was incredible. It the made singing, me cry. Yeah, we all it were really crying. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, we the whole <laughs> story made me cry. You realize we're doing La Boheme here at Southern. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, that would be a whole different experience for us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then we went to Paris and the opera we saw there was uh, Don Pasquale. That was the worst opera seats I've ever had. I mean, I couldn't even really bad. see. Oh. The, the stage at all, so we went from the best to the worst. Like, okay, we were up in the worst. top in the nosebleeds, and the seats are really like narrow, mm -hmm. and we're all basically stacked up one on top of the other, and it is not a place for tall people. Like my legs were up to my like chest, and I was so uncomfortable. I thought I was gonna have like like my back was gonna be broken by the end of it, so we just left like midway through. Yeah, yeah. yeah these these opera houses were they're the original opera houses, so they're built for the smaller people back mm -hmm. in like the seventeen whatevers. <laughs> Yep. So that's what caused a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hear you guys had some pretty great pictures yeah. that we could share. So yeah. what we could Absolutely. share some of those. Were there any like any situations that stood out to you guys that are most memorable? Oh we'll yeah. Take the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, me go ahead. Oh yeah, you go ahead. <laughs> we have some uh, pictures up. Oh, the lock bridge. Um you this was on one of the first places, yeah, I think it was yeah. in Austria. Yeah. Um, we were walking around, we had some extra time, and we yeah. were just walking around, and we came across this huge pond thing with this beautiful bridge, and there's like a little playground for kids on the other side, and that was just one of the locks on it. Yeah. <laughs> they have a lot of lock bridges. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah. lock bridges. They're known as the lock bridges, yeah. and yeah. people yeah. just put their little mementos Oh, that's me. <laughs> that, yeah. that is inside um, of Pisa. Yeah, yeah. that was while we were climbing down. down Pisa, and you know, it's all like original architecture, and there's no rails or anything. So <laughs> you have, have to kind of like this. hold on to the sides of the walls because <laughs> the stairs dip in from how old it is, and it was a little sketchy. But I'm glad I did <laughs> it because I could say I walked up Pisa. So yeah. 281 stairs. 
Yeah, something, something like that. Yeah. I was I wasn't wanting to count because <laughs> 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 I was re I was regretting it already. <laughs> I was like, I can't think about this. I just gotta do just it. Climb, just yeah, climb. yeah. <laughs> that was what one of that? the last churches we went to. Um, so probably um, the one in the square, the big piazza in Venice. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, we went to a lot of different churches. Mm -hmm. One, because that's yeah. where a lot of the artwork is. I mean, you can go to these churches and they have, I mean, really incredible artwork in there. Mm -hmm. There's a church in Paris called La Madeleine. And when I went there, the, the piece of art that was hanging behind the altar would not fit in this room. <laughs> it was so huge. And it looked like it was suspended. Mm -hmm. You know, so you have to go into the churches and I believe this one was at that, that square in Venice because it floods. When the, the tide comes in, that square is right on the water and yeah. it floods. Yeah. And of course, the one that was Now that, I thought that, um, I've been to Paris before and it did not have all the construction around it. It's, there's a lot of construction around it now. But mm -hmm. once you get in there, in through the glass doors. It actually is pretty nice. Mm -hmm. It's and peaceful. You went up. Yeah, I went up. Um, there's a middle platform and then there's all the way to the very top. I was too chicken to go all the way to the <laughs> top and I really wish I did, but I psyched myself out. So I just went to the middle platform. Um, but I mean, you can just walk around and it was the whole view of Paris. I mean, you could see everything. It was absolutely gorgeous. and. It was crowded, but it wasn't too crowded. <laughs> um, but I mean, I just loved it. And you know, I wanted to do it so I could say, you know, I've been up in the Eiffel Tower and <laughs> I'm really glad I did. So, yeah. yeah. What is that? that was after we <laughs> left the Eiffel, Eiffel Tower. It was actually train tracks that were above oh, us. Okay. Okay. And then we were going into the train station that was below that. Okay. So Paris, France. Oh, oh. <laughs> that is Montmartre. <laughs> That's in France. It's another arrondissement of France. And to get to Montmartre, you have to climb up all these things. You either go up this way or you go up this way. Or you could take this thing called the funiculaire. So the first time I went to Paris, I didn't know what a funiculaire was. I walked up the zigzag mm -hmm. stairs and realized the funiculaire was the, the elevator that would bring you straight from the train station all the way up. So this time, you, we're going to be smart. Yeah. We're going to take the funiculaire. <laughs> <laughs> we we, we thought we were going on the funiculaire, but it just brought us to the street, and we had to try and find this thing. We never found it. We walked all the way up again, and it's like, there it is right there. There was even a sign. It was, it was yeah, crazy. There was it was a funicular, and we started walking in the direction. Yeah. We got lost, so we're yeah. like, yeah. okay. That's exactly what happened the first time. <laughs> yeah. But inside that church is very, very blue, so everything mm -hmm. there is a gorgeous mm -hmm. blue. I can't see what that one is. Um, the I see a bridge. Is that in Prague? <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> That's either Leipzig, Germany. That looks like Germany. Or um, is that in front of the Opera House? The last know. opera we went to. There's so many places that we're so many. There's so many. We can't tell. <laughs> Megan was our very artistic picture taker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I loved her pictures. She has a great eye. That is Old Town Hall, isn't it? No. What is that it? is just a building we were passing oh. in Venice. Yeah, just yeah. a building in Venice. That's what we looked at the whole time. I mean, that yeah. the architecture was just incredible. Yeah. So just a building, and you could take a picture of it as worthy <laughs> yeah. of looking at it. Mean, that's kind of neat. Oh, Coliseum. that's the Colosseum. Yeah. When I went to the Colosseum the first time, there's this place in it where you could tell that the people who were going to go in and fight had made a cross. Mm -hmm. And when I saw it, it was etched in about that far. And as I'm, I'm Catholic, so going to a place like that, well, going to Rome in general as a Catholic is yeah. kind of, you know, surreal. But going into the Colosseum where so many Christians were put to death, just for the entertainment of, of the people. And seeing that cross is like, hmm. But the mechanics in there, the, the, the places where you'd sit, they're kind of eroded now. In fact, they more are. so even than the last yeah. time I went. 
but the the underneath the mechanics you could see all the places where they'd hold um, mostly animals you could see the works where they'd uh, bring up the floor and lower mm -hmm. the floor flood it and unflood it I mean that was really incredible when yeah. you know that this is all stone it's rock and big <laughs> yeah. I mean the huge amounts of pillars and rock um, the fact that they were able to do that it's pretty pretty yeah. amazing yeah, yeah. It was really eerie, honestly, like yeah. seeing all, knowing that much happened there and you're just standing there and it's peaceful and quiet now. Mm -hmm. yeah. wow. You this come out of the train station and it's like, there it is. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> that's huge. That was outside of the yeah, Coliseum. That was that's outside the back of the side of the Coliseum. Coliseum. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. these huge trees that are just absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. that, that, that was in Paris. In Paris. Yeah. Um, close to our hotel, which was like a 40 minute bus ride away from the mm -hmm. train station. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah. We stayed yeah. in a little village. Yeah, yeah. it was a yeah. little village that was actually historical. Yeah. And, and yeah. that looked like it was right by the cemetery wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm, oh, my Charlie. favorite. Mm -hmm. This is at Trevi <laughs> Fountain. Um, Trevi Fountain has huge architectural statues in in the back where the water comes out and it's cold and while we were going through the class I kept telling you about <laughs> fountain fountain the last time I brought a group back they labeled these fountains fountain fountain because you have the big fountain and then you have the fountain that mm -hmm. you could drink from so like, go drink some because it's so cold and okay. so good and I think a few people were afraid until I started just downing water <laughs> and we decided it wasn't busy there it was nice I'm um, you go later in the day and there are so many people you can't get that close. But the, we got on a nice ledge and we're able to take a, a really nice picture, it throw was, the, the yeah. coin in. Oh, yeah. 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 I did that, so I'm going to be gonna there for back. sure one day. <laughs> I, it's guaranteed. <laughs> oh, that's us. Yeah. Hey. That is in Venice. Venice. Yeah. Yes. Venice. On the bridge. Yeah, oh, right yeah. looking out into the basically the sea that's mm -hmm. the distance between venice um to venice mestra so you had venice i forget santa lucia mm -hmm. area so, and yep. then venice mestra and i believe that bridge is near the um that same big piazza with yeah, the piazza. Church yeah. Yeah. It that is. floods and if you go to the left there's like these street vendors with some of the mm -hmm. most gorgeous paintings yeah. and they're mm -hmm. just sitting yeah. there painting yeah, they're just so that's in that's Austria and Salzburg. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. Salzburg. That was by that's the hotel. Lock Bridge. Yeah, the Lock yeah. Bridge. Did we take that? We walked on that road, yeah. like yeah, by yeah, the yeah. riverside on the way to the Mozart dinner. Which yeah, that was, was one of my favorite things. Right. <laughs> yeah. That is on the bridge. If you go to the other picture, the bridge that's far out, that's that bridge. Yeah. <laughs> so, Who is that? That's, that's Nick. Okay. That's <laughs> <laughs> that is, of Venice, course, Italy. Venice. Venice. Yeah. Oh, did you guys take the tour? Did you get in the water and take a tour? <laughs> no, there? no. That was actually on my bucket list. Was to <laughs> yeah. Get, okay, so I'm like, I'm gonna get in Venice, Italy, and I'm gonna get a gondola, and I'm gonna row through Italy, and then I get there, and I'm like, this gondola is just a a canoe. I didn't know it was just a canoe. <laughs> so I didn't, because I realized it's just a canoe. Yeah. It's an expensive canoe. They're quite, expensive it's like canoe. 80 euro per oh, wow. ride. Yeah. yeah. So. We decided that's just the bridge. That, is it the bridge that, to our hotel? Yes. yes. We crossed that bridge, there are so many bridges a million times. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a maze. It, yeah, it's a maze. Oh, there's that. <laughs> we sat there on the edge um, mm -hmm. and watched the tide come up closer. And it, we, I was like, oh no, it's not going to get up onto the stone. And it did. Mm -hmm. And we were just, I, I could stick my finger out within like 15 minutes. It was like my finger was all the way in, just waiting oh, wow. for it. And mm -hmm. but they have stuff set up now where they like siphon all the water out obviously oh. but I kind of wanted to see it flooded I kind of did yeah. too I've seen pictures of it but I didn't get to experience and it and we saw a pirate ship yeah and <laughs> you wanted me to take a picture of that and then there's a bird on a post that's like right there so I'm taking a picture of the bird and they're like oh my did you get a picture I'm like yeah guys I did and they're like wait what did you take a picture of I was like I took a picture of that bird <laughs> not the pirate ship not the pirate see, ship I got a picture of the pirate ship, ship though oh you did yeah. 
That's mm -hmm. Pisa. Yeah. yeah. That's actually a really good picture. Not Katie just that Vandenberg you're... gets credit because I'm in it. <laughs> True. Good point. I mean, it's not just that you're holding it up, but you could really see that thing is yeah. really leaning. Mm -hmm. um, my husband had said that he thought that there were guide wires holding it up. Oh. There was nothing holding that up. I think they have them set there. I mean, you they can see there's big cranes yeah. on either side. Okay, so um, they do have something there in case maybe it gets windy. I don't yeah. know, but there was nothing holding that thing up. And uh, yeah, it's pretty. So, would you guys recommend this trip to other music majors? Oh, music yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. Majors? Would you give them any extra advice while you're going? <laughs> <laughs> what would be your um, advice? Don't pack a 41 pound suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was. Yeah, bring a backpack. I tried instead. to tell them. Bring a backpack. <laughs> Actually, oh, yeah, that was the yeah, best yeah, thing. We had two people bring, like, almost like knapsacks mm -hmm. type things, but they were long and tall and they carried everything on their back. And it seemed to be much easier for them to get back and forth. That yeah. was especially when commuting and transitioning yeah. from yeah. the platform to the train, and there's tons of people waiting, and you don't mm -hmm. have to look for a spot to put your suitcase. That was mm -hmm. stressful. And um, yeah, it's like kind of a thing where you have to like run on the train. I mean, pick up the suitcase, put it on, you get on, and then you know there's people pushing and impatient. It's and stressful. It was very stressful. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That sounds I like a lot of. You gotta be organized yeah. and yeah. learn how to roll your yeah. clothes up and all yeah. that sorts of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you have to know just how to like go with the situation because you know, you can't be like, I need to know this, this and this. You just have to, you know, go with whatever mm -hmm. what you know happens. So because a lot of things were very unexpected. So yeah. but yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I think for anyone who loves music, I think that this trip is an essential for your career yeah. and not only for your career but for your own self because it changes your mind. It puts like people mm -hmm. with your music. I think you should be educated if you're going to perform it and yeah. I think it gives you an edge that no one else has. Yeah, yeah great. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for coming in and sharing you, your yeah. experiences with us. That's a lot of traveling, and I'm sure there was <laughs> some jet lag in there and oh, some yeah, exhaustion, yeah. but it was probably worth it, it sounds was so like. Worth it. it was worth yes. it. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much. Yeah, and I, here we are back at Window on the World. My name is Karsten Gilbert, and thanks for being with us. Mm -hmm.